Hello and greetings from Iceland. This volcano update includes a damage report for the town Grindavík and I will be talking about how the authorities responded during those crises and uh, I will of course be talking about geology as well or how things look today. And I'm starting with a public meeting with the residents of Grindavík where they had the chance to ask questions and many of the answers became very useful for this update because uh, the townspeople both uh, praised and criticized the authorities and also scientists who got a healthy dose of criticism due to often confusing information. And my own perspective about that has been quite clear. The science community is facing this volcano tectonic episode at a location where we need to go back 800 years to find a similar event. So the Reykjanes Peninsula is just this huge geology classroom right now. And I understand both residents and scientists and I think that a big part of this problem is uh, communication. Like the representative of the Met Office said uh, during this meeting that in order to allow people to move back it was necessary to ensure that the Met Office had enough manpower to respond to natural hazards there since it's uh, only one expert doing the night shift and this comment came as a surprise because this man was actually saying that it is safe to move back to town, but only if the Met Office gets some more money, meaning that we could fix this huge housing crisis in an instant, but that is the hardest part with all this. So let's look at the damage report since uh, it explains things even better. In total, there are 40 houses considered to be unfit for repair, or at uh, unsafe location due to the fissure that runs through town, and those houses will be demolished. And the insurance system we have is basically quite simple. We have this public institution called the Natural Catastrophe Insurance of Iceland, whose task is to ensure that all buildings in the country are uh, insured against natural disasters, and the premiums are collected alongside with fire insurance premiums, and the fire insurance is mandatory and the official guideline when those houses are valued and the so-called own risk or the owner's risk is 2% of the total damage. So this public insurance company or fund has been busy lately. Almost 100 houses need to be looked at more closely due to possible structural damage and in total they have received uh, 256 damage reports and it's almost only the houses by the fissure or on the fissure that got damaged and as for the town's infrastructure I have good news there the electricity and hot water and cold water it's uh, all working now in the complete town but there are however four or five streets still without working sewage system but that will be fixed just in the next days, which means that the town is back to normal as for infrastructure and the ground above the magma dike has almost completely stopped uh, sinking, so it has stabilized, but uh, of course we can expect some issues to pop up in the coming months or years. So the main problem now is this huge housing crisis that according to the Met Office could be fixed in an instant if only they get more money. And uh, it was actually announced yesterday that they will get that money. But the town, it remains closed. So this hasn't changed anything. So let's talk about how this system works. Or not. It is the Met Office that does the science reports for the civil defense. And it's a civil defense that uh, makes the big decisions like to evacuate based on the science data. And looking at the work of these two institutions, like this discussion about money, there is clearly some inconsistency to be found. The sound and the picture don't match all the time. So at this meeting with the residents, doubts were expressed about the uh, ability of these institutions to fulfill their role. And mainly through this question, when we will move back, how can we trust the authorities to warn us in time this time? Because there we have another big issue that I haven't covered on the channel before. So let's go back to this awful day, November 10th. The constant earthquakes gradually worsened throughout the day and it became clear early on that uh, 
this was uh, something way more uh, dangerous than often before. And they have to keep in mind that these people had already gone through many such events before. So it was not as they were doing this for the first time. So in the afternoon, the retirement home was evacuated. The people just got enough and uh, took matters in their own hands. As the uh, retirement home was almost splitting apart, sitting on this fault. And uh, it was then around six o'clock in the afternoon when things were going crazy. The ground was shaking non-stop. And the Met Office, they noticed through their instruments that uh, it was most likely a magma dike forming under the town. So they figured out what the problem was and did a good job there. And uh, as required of them, they passed the information to the civil defense. And uh, they started to think about things. And the situation in town was getting so bad that it was hard to stand up straight the main highway to the town was uh, closed due to cracks or one of the three escape routes and the others at risk. So the local police was very well aware of the seriousness. There was no lack of information. The inhabitants were already fleeing by the thousands and when the official evacuation order finally came, most of them had already left. So I do understand why the townspeople are a bit skeptic now when it comes to the civil defense performance and ask how can we trust them again after this? And I don't think that they will do so. But this meeting did also tell me that it is absolutely clear that the people there want to rebuild the town. And they do have the political support to do so. However, it is a fact that not all will return. Since this was a major shock. And it is also clear that they won't build again by this fissure that caused all these problems. So they need a new risk assessment to uh, plan the future settlement and even lava barriers. And uh, some of the problems are more complicated. And as an example, I'm mentioning the people that uh, own houses by these fissures or elsewhere in town. And uh, they want to move, but they fear that they will get stuck in town with uh, almost uh, worthless property, facing a ridiculous rental market elsewhere. However, this uh, new reality for the town is not uh, all bad. Like, uh, the town is planning to leave a few cracks in the ground unfixed that uh, might even become a tourist attraction due to all the attention it has been getting. So, I believe that the future may be brighter than many believe today. And the market itself might even ensure that uh, homeowners can move elsewhere without facing a loss. But uh, if not, I assume that the government will step in. But first, before we start to lay Grindavik out as Iceland's next uh, tourist sensation, there are many obstacles to overcome. And the biggest one is, of course, the current status when it comes to geology. So let's uh, end there today. The land under the power plant and the Blue Lagoon has been rising faster than before the November 10th event. But the land uplift has however slowed down since uh, last Friday. And the latest GPS data from today is showing that the land has even subsided a little. But uh, we need a few more days of data to see that better. So it could be that the magma is using this channel from November 10th to enter this uh, dike again. I can't say. But uh, as for the seismometer, several large earthquakes were detected two days ago and overall the frequency and size of earthquakes has become more irregular over the last days. So I'm watching the seismometers a bit more now than usual. And we are at such a critical point right now that the next days might determine the outcome. Or will the land uplift continue? and reach the same height as before the disaster on November 10th. And when and if we move over that point, we should see it very clearly if we are moving into a new earthquake period with even more uncertainty. However, a standstill could also be the case and that would make things very hard for all of us. Although it would not surprise me if we are looking at the beginning of the next chapter right now.
And no matter how this is going to turn out, we hope that we don't have to wait for too long. Although Mother Nature has proven us uh, all wrong so far. And uh, with that, I'm sending you best regards from the Volcano Island, Iceland. <laughs>